Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here really as an individual British scientist, but someone who is a great enthusiast for IASA and an admirer of all it does, and in particular, a huge admirer of this massive monumental report, the GEA, which uh, we have just received. And it is crucially important for the reasons already stated. And one hopes that politicians will at least glance at it, because politicians, of course, uh, tend to focus on the local, the parochial, and the immediate, and the long-term and global always gets to the bottom of the agenda. And that is, of course, the main problem confronting the world, because most of the key issues are indeed long-term, and they demand concerted international action. And to draw attention to those issues is one of the main aims of this report. And also, politicians often are lacking the best scientific advice. In this country, we do rather better than some other countries in having a lot of scientific advisors in government, but I think what is wonderful is that they now have, in principle, access to a really authoritative and wide-ranging report covering energy and all the other systems which are linked to energy, population, water resources, agriculture, etc. And IASA has been uniquely placed to coordinate this vast effort because it is intrinsically interdisciplinary, can draw on the expertise worldwide in all the fields that are relevant. And uh, each chapter of the major report is a real instructional document on something. And I'm particularly interested in, for instance, carbon capture and storage and whether that can be done feasibly. And there is a very good chapter on that in the book. And the report overall does link together energy, climate, and environment. And it, in particular, emphasizes the opportunities as well as the costs of the change. And, of course, politicians won't gain much resonance by advocating a bare-bones approach that entails unwelcome lifestyle changes. They've got to have some uh, positive message. And I think, just to isolate a couple of the many messages, there are things that can be done in developing countries which will be hugely cost-effective, in particular to uh, uh, reduce the dependence on uh, uh, stoves burning uh, uh, biofuels which are hugely polluting and which will cause huge numbers of deaths that would in itself be very cost-effective if one could electrify the rest of the world in some way and also, incidentally, remove some of the minor contributors other than CO2 to global warming at the same time. So that's an important message for developing countries. But for developed countries, surely one should, in the short term, try to implement all measures that actually save money by using energy more efficiently, insulating buildings, etc., and also incentivize the new technologies so that as fossil fuel prices rise, a transition to clean energy is less costly and to prioritize the development of all the new energy sources, be they wind, tide, solar or nuclear and the other associated technologies uh, like uh, CCS and batteries and all that sort of thing. And all these offer exciting economic opportunities for the developed world and are part of the uh, uh, requirements if we are to have a sustainable world where there is adequate energy for all people. And we have to bear in mind that energy is just one of the uh, needs for the world, along with uh, um, food and other resources. And IASA overall is uh, an organization which is spearheading the study of all these things in an international context. And that's why I think it's such a valuable organization. And that's why, in particular, this report that we are celebrating today uh, is a really important landmark document, which I hope will be uh, read, at least in summary, by the politicians and digested by their advisors so that the um, uh, advice that is given to governments is based on the best available science across all subfields of science, and that the message does rise 
above the agenda because of the eloquent way in which it is presented in the summary document. So it's wonderful to have this document and I'm privileged to be here today uh, to hear this summary of what's in it. So thank you very much indeed.